Colossal is the word as we welcome you inside the stand. Sheriff Center Canola Leahy next to Chris McLaughlin. C Mac, take us through the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Well, for Cal Poly, they've got the set. Dvorak, that's Maya, their number one outside hitter, number 15. Watch her. She hits about, she hits about every third ball, averages four kills per set and has a Noreno Sia-like serve. She has 49 aces so far this year. And for Hawaii, they gotta keep feeding the middles. Sky Williams and Amber Ijeda are the Wahine's highest percentage attackers. Why not give them as many sets as possible? Cal Poly, the two-time reigning Big West Conference champions, coming in nine and one, currently sitting alone with just the one loss atop the conference standings. A win tonight for Hawaii, though, would allow them to leapfrog Cal Poly and be in control at the top of the stack in the league as we are going to have a miss hit called against Noreno Sia. And the first point goes to Cal Poly. The Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineups will be scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Rainbow Wahine coming in 18 and 3, 8 and 2 in the league. You will notice Brooke Van Sickle back in the starting rotation for Hawaii. A net violation called against the Rainbow Wahine. And just like that, C-Mac, it's a quick 2-0 in favor of the Mustangs. Mourinho Sia with a double contact. That's rare. Mourinho Sia into the net. That's also rare. Not a good start for the Rainbow Wahine. Good start for Cal Poly. That pass on the money. You'll see it goes middle to Amber Igidi. She had two blockers waiting for her. So here come the Mustangs. Quick middle set goes to Meredith Phillips. It's dug up. From the back row, the swing by McKenna Ross goes long. And a point for Cal Poly. The first time these two teams met in California back on October 11th. It was a doomsday type of experience for the Wahine. They had season lows in kills, hitting percentage, assists, and blocks as Cal Poly pulled off the three-set sweep. This is Maya Dvorak blasting it off the block, saved by Hannah Helvig. Here's Brooke Van Sickle by the double block. And that was a blistering whack by the junior transfer from Oregon. It took a long time for Hoy to notch their first point of the night. Brooke Van Sickle, knee brace and all, finds a way to get it done. Yeah, still showing some spectacular bounce, even with the heavily wrapped knee, which forced her to miss three matches a couple of weeks ago. Here is Noreen Yosia, and she misses the floor wide. Yosia had it revved up from behind the service line Friday night in Hawaii's five-set thriller of a victory over UC Santa Barbara. She had four aces, was just one kill shy of a triple-double performance. She was just awesome. Amazing performance. Luka Dixon with the serve. Anna Helvig off the bump set. A little too hot to handle for the libero. Dixon. And so Hawaii gets another point. How much do you think Anna Helvig's parents showing up from Europe helped her in getting 19 kills on Friday night. Got to be inspirational, right? For sure. Career high 19. And as that serve is good from Van Sickle, forces Cal Poly out of system. Free chance here for the Bows. Yosia, right side, Helvig, two blockers up, and she sends it long. Tried to avoid that block to no avail. So five serving two here coming up for Cal Poly. The thing about Helvig that made her night so rare was the fact that she got off to such an ice cold start was hitting negative numbers through the first set by the end of the match the career high 19 kills she hit 304. Amazing. and sickle from the back row good save there by Dvorak left side the touch by Nikki Jackson she's denied access and that's Amber Igidi next to Helvey that's a pretty good block right there Helvey taking on the, the best left side hitter from the other team my G, just a force up front the way she's blocking these days. She's just incredible. Blocking almost two kill, two blocks per set. Kyra Hanawahine with the serve. Middle is dinked over by Madeline Mercer. Chance for Hawaii. Here's Helvig by the double block. And down, and that gets a double fist pump from the Stockholm Sweden native. A little mustard on that one, didn't she? That's right. Four serving five here early in set number one. Again, Cal Poly out of system. It will be Jackson. That doesn't get above the tape. And that's a point for Hawaii. They draw even at five apiece. Jackson, a 6'2 senior from Henderson, Nevada, averaging 1.67 kills 
per set. The strength for this Cal Poly offense, certainly Maya Dvorak on the opposite pin, but also the middles. They want to pass well so they can set their middles, very similar to what Hawaii wants to accomplish offensively. You'll see it outside to Ross. And she finds that end line. And that is a point for Hawaii. We may have a challenge. You look for a second like Caroline Walters, the first year head coach for the Mustangs, was seeking out the challenge card, but she decided to decline on that option. Probably at 5-6 in the first set. Not a good idea to use up one of your three given challenges. In the middle, that is Mercer. But the roof was up. Sky Williams saying ah, ole. And that's now five straight points for the Rainbow Wahine. Mercer, an all Big West pick in 2018. She is solid there. Great blocker as well. Another good serve by Hana Wahine. Here's the forecheck from the back row. And you see why she is so difficult to handle. 6'1 sophomore from Truckee, California. And what is amazing about her story is she played a combined 30 sets the previous two years and was playing behind Tori Van Winden, who is just one of the all-world talents that Cal Poly boasted the last couple of seasons. And But Tori out and has not played this season because of the effects of a fifth concussion suffered late last year. And so that opened the door for Dvorak. And I don't think anybody expected her to be this much of a force. I'm not sure she even expected it to be this much of a force. She's now their go-to player. She gets twice as many sets as the next player. And she's getting it done with efficiency. Outside set, and that's a good-looking swing there by Jessica McCroskey, another senior. Six-footer from San Diego, California. She has done the tour in terms of her position standing, converted from outside hitter to defensive specialist, back to outside hitter, and there she is recording a kill. Serve goes long, that time from Mercer. And so Hawaii up two here in set number one. So much of Hawaii's success this season, according to Robin Amo, has relied upon their just being engaged, right? Being, quote unquote, up for the match. Uh, there is no excuse for anybody not to be up for this matchup tonight. Right. Just in case they aren't up, guess what? The crowd will get them up. You would hope so, for sure. Krosky with another kill there, not for a lack of effort defensively for Hawaii. Rico Aquino going into the signage across the way. She had a career high 25 digs against UCSB. Here's Van Sickle up the ladder and down the shoot it goes. Brooke looking very sharp early on here. She doesn't seem like there's any side effects from that nagging knee injury. She has provided a spark off the bench for Hawaii in some of their recent matches. Tonight they're getting that starting call. Outside, there's Dvorak off the block, kept the live. Now going the other side, the roof is up on Jessica McCroskey. Hawaii able to read along the net very well. It was Van Sickle out there on the pin. Van Sickle all by herself out there, gets the block solo. Smallest player on the court for Hawaii, getting the biggest block. Came into tonight's match with 33 blocks on the season. Dvorak, the tip. Good layout save there by Bailey Choi. Van Sickle, another big windup, but it's dug up by Dixon. Dvorak, does she get a piece of the block? No, misses the floor wide. Another point for the Rainbow Wahine, and they're up a four spot, and that forces Caroline Walters to signal for a timeout. The crowd loving the start for Hawaii. Welcome back, let's take a look at the Jack Facts. A new nemesis since rejoining the Big West in 2013. Hawaii and Cal Poly have played 13 times. The Bows took the first eight matches, but the Mustangs have won four of the last five. That's right, they had only beaten Hawaii four times since 1980 prior to the 2017 season. But Cal Poly has owned this league the two previous years, and they sit atop the standings currently. Hawaii trying to change that tonight as Dvorak is blocked back, and Hawaii winning the battle at the net right now, C-Mac. Up three blocks to none, and how about the two offenses? 
Hawaii right now hitting 273. Cal Poly hitting negative 188. Remember last year they led the conference hitting 295. So it's a team that uh, offensively is prolific. Well, what you trailed in this opening set by a score of five to two. They have outscored Cal Poly 11 to three since that time. Big swing by McCrosky. But the door was shut closed. Noreen, you'll see it next to IGD. Does IGD know how to celebrate or what? She goes up, Patrick's over and down, and then she gives like a stare to her partner, you'll see it like, did we just do that? <laughs> Four total team blocks already for this Rainbow Roofing Company. They have punched in for work here to start this match. Another pass off the net. McCroskey. Layout save there by Ross. Here's Van Sickle off of one leg. And it works anyway. You know, Van Sickle's a volleyball player. She can do things on broken plays so well. That bump set was way off the net. She had to scramble for it, take off one leg. That was a step out maneuver. She finds a way to find the deep corner. And then flashes Smart that play. gleaming smile to boot. There you go. As Okino sends it into the net. And that ends a run for Hawaii of six straight points. And we mentioned how they have turned things around since it was 5-2 Cal Poly to start. That's Leah Unger now going back to serve. 5-6 sophomore from Manhattan Beach, California. Had a career high 14 digs and two aces in the first meeting with Hawaii. Floats this one deep. Here's Aichini swings and whiffs at it. And that is an unforced error and point for Cal Poly. That was a great pass by McKenna Ross. Put it right on the money. Rare misconnection between Bailey Choi and Amber Igini. Saw a couple of misconnections in the middle the other night as well. Hawaii was able to steer the ship back on course in that regard. And they did go through a couple of rough patches when it came to that setter middle connection. Take a good look at Bailey Choi. She's added so much since transferring over from Utah. There's the connection. That time, it was silky smooth. I was just going to say, it'd be a great time to repeat. Because the other team will expect you're going to go away from the middle attack and you just disconnected with. Igidi just buries it. Remember Igidi. Ten kills, nine blocks the other night against UC Santa Barbara. She leads the team with 15 solo stuffs on the year. You'll see it with the serve. Good pass there by Jackson. She gets the set on the outside, is blocked back, saved by Dixon. And the Voracek able to settle things on the opposite position. What do you think makes her so difficult to stop? Number one, she's left-handed. Why do see many left-handers in practice? In fact, do they have a left-hander? They do not, I can recall. So that makes it difficult that you're not playing against left-handers. Number two is she's a, she's a risk taker. Van Sickle misses the floor wide, narrowly. And Robin Amo, I think, is going to challenge the in-out call with the R2 Dixon Chun. Van Sickle trying to take line there. We'll see if she was able to catch it by virtue of the replay. Dixon Chun, the R2 on the floor. Bill Forrester atop the ladder across the way. Randy Rubinall. And Dean Tamura, the two line judges here this evening. Shot down the line and oh, oh it's mm. pretty good on first look. Mm, that's an intriguing angle there. We'll see if we can catch anything from this side. That one a little bit more ambiguous. Yeah. The first one looked, looked like it was uh, caught some white paint. Love it, it. You know, Brooke took the absolute right shot hitting down the line. You see where those four hands across, taking her cross court. Normally her favorite shot. This one here, she shows she can go line. If she missed it, she didn't miss by much, that's for sure. There's maybe the best shot right here. Although it gets blocked a little bit by the player, so. Is there enough to overturn the call is the question. There is. 
Dixon Chun said that was in fact in. I think he made the right, right, right call. And so a good challenge there by Robin Amo in her third season. Logged her 57th victory as Ringo Wahine head coach the other night. Big difference between 16 12 and 17 11. You're right. Doesn't necessarily mathematically seem like much, but psychologically, yeah. especially against a team like Cal Poly, it certainly does. Dvorak. Aquino was in position, but that one came in with some velocity. And she brings some major heat. This is a case where Helbig might need to move over to the left and block Dvorak. And here she is, that jump serve handled well by Okino. The set goes to Helvig, a little off balance. At the fingertips of the block. Dvorak from the back row, roll shot, diving save. You'll see it over the net, saved by Van Sickle. Ross through the block and down. That was forceful from the senior McKenna Ross. She's challenging a 6-3 and 6-2 block. McKenna Ross just fearless up there, challenging that big, big block. I think she feels like she has a certain vendetta against Cal Poly. Hit negative 214 in that match in California. Yeah, she really struggled up there. Good serve there by Kyra Hanawahine. Slide to Mercer is dug up. Ross the dink tipped back. She jumps right back up, but it's dug up by Dixon. Jackson's roll shot, easy pickings there for you'll see it. Here's Helvey off the block and down. And right now, Hawaii winning the scrambling plays in this opening frame. Once again, Helvig at the end of plays being the Terminator, hitting much harder than I'm used to seeing her hit. Right now, that's enough to force Cal Poly to call a timeout. Welcome back. HMSA's dental plan is all about winning smiles, and it's so much easier to flash the smile when you are winning. That's why we've seen a few more on the Hawaii side of the net so far, Seema. You know, Kanoa, you mentioned earlier how Hawaii lost every statistical battle the last time these two played. Guess what's happening now? Hawaii's winning the kill percentage battle, 421 to negative 077, and they're winning the blocking, and they're winning the digging. Turned back to Voracek again there. Jackson blocked back. Hawaii impenetrable at the net at the moment. Jackson this time tools the block. But again, the Rainbow Wahine looming large above the tape here in set one. I think impenetrable was the best way to put it until that last shot. Right. Hawaii just would not let the ball cross the net. So here is Jackson. Has played sparingly throughout her career, but inheriting a larger role here. In 2019, Sky Williams in the middle. It's dug up by Jackson. Oh, well, a little mix up there on the second touch. No violation there, according to the officials. Helvey caught the fingertips of the block. Chased down on the second touch by Dvorak. Free chance here for the Bows. You'll see a right side. Helvig, no blockers up. And she just soft touches it to the floor. So Robin Amo relents from her argument with Dixon Chun, thinking all's well that ends well on the point. Yeah, no need to argue about that. It looked like... It did look like it hit both those players. Exactly. And it was Dixon and the setter, Avalon Denekoshe. 20 serving 13 here in set one. Dvorak from the back row tried to slice it cross court. Good dig there by Choi. Ross off the bump set. And Rossi's got flowing right now. Third kill on her sixth attempt for McKenna Ross, and this is the largest lead for Hawaii in set one. When Rossi goes up, she's facing a huge block. That time they took her line because they know she likes to go line. And she just says, okay, fine. I'll go cross court, and she gets the kill. McCroskey rattled around on the Hawaii side of the net and two-handed over. So chance here for the Mustangs. They go to Dvorak from the back row. And there is no getting by that Hawaii block. That may not have gotten over the tape anyway, but Sky Williams in perfect position. Yeah, and Hawaii in a broken play put the ball over to the right person. They put it to Denekoshe so she could not set the next ball. 22 serving 13. Outside, McCroskey off the block. Two-hand punch saved by Van Sickle. Ross tight to the net. Nice pinball action at the twine. As Ross goes off the block, it's kept alive by Dvorak. 
Oh, that quick set outside, a little too low for McCroskey. So Hawaii with the advantage. Here's you'll see the touch shot. Diving save by Dixon back over. Sky Williams in the middle, pounds it off the forearms of Mercer. Dixon bumps, sets, Dvorak blocked back. Taking a stab at it is McCroskey. And she misses the floor wide. Is there a touch? No touch. And Hawaii wins a marathon sequence. I tell you, Kano, this has got to give Hawaii all kinds of confidence playing against this Cal Poly team. Because when they went to Cal Poly and played at Not Arena, they had all kinds of problems all night long, whether it was the crowd or just their stagnant play. All of a sudden now, they're playing just the opposite. The Nekoshe by the double block with some heat. As Aquino tried to conjure up the rolling save, Dvorak give her now four kills on 15 swings. So you don't ever stop Maya Dvorak. She's right there at her season kill average. Uh, but holding her to a buck 33, you're at least containing her to a degree. Exactly. Right side, here's Ross. The block was late in forming. It's a net violation called against the Mustangs. And looky here, Hawaii up double digits in set one. And they'll serve for a little ball. Tim McCrossy got sort of tangled up in the twine. I think Caroline Walters has got to be a little shocked if her team is down by 10. But this is a good Cal Poly team. They're going to run away and hide, I'll tell you that. As evidence there on the perfect slide execution to Meredith Phillips. Phillips had eight kills, hit 429 to go along with four blocks in the first meeting with the Rainbow Wahine. Great wide slide all the way out to the antenna. Terrific set from Denekashe. Here's Denekashe on the serve. Good pass there, Okino. Outside, Van Sickle up on springs and pounds it home for the final punctuation mark to end an impressive performance in set number one. Hawaii declares themselves ready for battle here in one of the biggest matches of the season, taking set one, 25-15. The Rainbow Wahine Volleyball is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii and Hawaii Honda Dealers. Well, Hawaii passing out some invites to the block party in that first set. C-Mac, four total team blocks, and part of the reason why they had Cal Poly hitting an abysmal percentage to open this match. Remember, I to get on three of those blocks, kind of held big in on two of them, and Brooke Van Sickle, what a show she put on the first set. Five kills and eight tries. She's hitting 625. Pretty good number, and she brings so much stability to Kanoa through the passing pattern. She also digs a lot of balls. She had four digs that first set out of Hawaii's 15. She led the team in digging the first set, led the team in attacking. And she did not play against Cal Poly in the first meeting in Cal Poly. And that's right, providing a, a new look, right? I mean, obviously she brings a certain dynamic for this team in all phases. The other side of it is Cal Poly hadn't seen her yet prior to that first set, and Brooke Van Sickle taking advantage. Come and visit the new Spectrum store at Pearl Highland Center above Sam's Club. Learn about Spectrum Mobile and get the best devices, latest technology, and coolest accessories. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 8, Sundays, 10 to 6. So Hawaii wins in demonstrative fashion in the first frame. Uh, but this is not one of those opponents where you can start thinking, okay, this is going to be a cakewalk the rest of the way. This is Cal Poly. The worst thing Poly can do is put it in cruise control right now, Kanoa. This is a very good Cal Poly team. They wouldn't be on top of the league if they were not a really, really good team. Marine Yosia will get the serving started here in set two. And it's a pretty good one, handled well by Jackson. Dvorak from the opposite side is dug up by Yosia. Bump set cross court goes to Helvig, dug up by Dvorak, tight to the net. Dvorak will just touch it over. Helvig sniffs it out. Oh, that one over the tape though, and it is dunked down by Meredith Phillips. So a missed opportunity there for Hawaii, close to the twine. Good control, tap down that time by Phillips. She could have easily followed through to the cable. You'll see a high and away to Helvig blocked back the cover by Van Sickle. And Okino just has to 
send it over on a free ball. The Voracek against a solo blocker in the form of Helbig, and she just gobbles her up. This is like a Xerox copy right. of the first set. Cal Poly jumping out to an early lead. First set, they went out 3-0 before Hawaii could score. And Hawaii trailed 5-2 in that first frame. Ended up winning 25-15. Ben Sickle drifting goes off the block, saved by Dvorak. So the setup to Jackson over the double block, saved there, Okino. Helvig, cross court, how about the layout? To keep it alive by Unger. Touched over by Jackson, Hawaii now in transition. Back bump set goes to Hana. Off the high, hands and down. It lingered for a moment, and it looked as though Mika Dixon might be able to get under it, but unable to. Highlight of that rally right there, Leah Unger's dig. Wow, she kept the ball on her own side of the net. Kept Cal Poly in the rally until Helbig does a little, nice little high hand shot. This is going to be a free ball here coming back for Hawaii. Van Sickle on her knees receives it. Ross comes swooping in. And Hawaii evens things up at two apiece. Kenna Ross now five kills, just one error hitting 444, C-Mac. Wow. Big difference from hitting negative. <laughs> Last time she was at Cal Poly. Uh, Van Sickle into the twine. I think that's one of the things you could look at if you're Hawaii. You say, look. Mott Jim, but there really was nowhere to go but up, right? Season lows across the board in just about every category. And so they knew they were at least going to get a better effort than that. Certainly set one proved to be a much better effort. Right, the dump shot sniffed out there by Okino. IGD in the middle off the block. Good one hand saved by Dvorak. Jackson. That may have been an out ball played by Yosia. And so Helvig two hands it across. Mustangs with the advantage. Jackson the swing. Tried to get cute with it. Couldn't get it past the net. Jackson saw two blockers up. She tried to do a little roll shot there. Just hit it too low. Cal Poly hit negative 0-2-6 in that first set. And mind you, they're coming off of a sweep victory against CSUN on Tuesday, where they hit a season best 4-11 as a team. Good save there by Van Sickle, but you'll see crosses that bottom line. Trying to get to that second touch. So four serving three here in set number two, and it's Nikki Jackson back behind the service line. Sky Williams in the middle. Went Rico, wrist away for the point. It's a great wrist away, but you know what? Rico Kino is just passing dimes tonight. Right on the money. Watch this pass. Good form. Yosia did not move an inch to set that ball. Sky Williams there quickly. Yeah, you, down. That's a good call on your part, pointing out the effort of Rico Kino as of late. Playing her best volleyball of her Hawaii career. About the 25 digs on Friday night. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's a season high for anybody in a Rainbow Wahine uniform this season. Back row set goes to Van Sickle. Takes a little something off of it. Oh, the pass was tight to the net, though. We got a joust above the tape. Played off of that by Yosia. Set outside a little too close for Ross. Got a little ping pong match there at the top of the tape. Dug up by Troy back over to the Mustang side. Dvorak the swing through the block. One hand layout save Van Sickle. Here's Ross winding up and unleashes it deep and long. Brooke Van Sickle here, making a nice one-handed save to keep the rally alive. And then at the end, Ross just missing long on her attack. Mercer goes into the net. These are the top two service ace teams in the Big West Conference. You have Cal Poly averaging just under two aces per set. That's tops in the league. That's actually sixth coming into the week nationally. They've got 155 aces on the year. That's a lot of aces. Hawaii on the other side with 1.3 aces per set. But I mean, that just tells you the discrepancy. Cal Poly is way out in front yeah. in this conference when it comes to the ability to score from the service line. When we asked Carolyn Walters, what's the key tonight? She said, oh, serve and pass. Bad pass there by Van Sickle. 
And so the advantage here to Cal Poly. Denikashe goes outside the touch by McCroskey. Good save one hand style by Choi. Another free chance though for the Mustangs. They go middle to Phillips and she goes off the block and down. So we saw Hawaii winning the majority of the scramble plays in set one. That's starting to swing the other way here in the second. Nice tip shot. Good save. Guiding save by Choi. Challenge here. Not sure what that was. Violation. All right. So yes, it will be Dixon Chun asked to take a look at that last sequence, and I do think they're asking for a net violation. That would that would have come earlier in the point. We'll see. Well, what you want the first challenge in set one on an in out call down the line, which was reversed. Oh, and there is some contact that looked like on the far side, CMAC. Yes, yes. That net cam comes in so handy in situations yeah. like this. Great camera. See if we can tell from this higher angle. Right, it's going to be right there. She's into the net. Left front, who was that, McCroskey? Uh, that would be... McCroskey, correct. Goes up. Here you can see, because of the net cam, you can see the shaking of the net, which is usually a telltale sign. We'll see. And it is a net violation. So how about on the challenges here this evening? Let me talk about the big swings in momentum. It goes from 7-5 to 6 up. We go to game service, 6 off. One thing now I think Robin's got to do is be very careful how she uses her third and final challenge. Rika Okino will serve. Here's Dvorak down the line. That was a heavy-handed swing. Maya Dvorak coming off of a match Sunday against C uh, Tuesday I should say against CSUN 20 kills hit 532 the first time around against the Bows she had 16 put downs hitting 323 a three time conference player of the week this year in really her first season of any legitimate action well, she comes from the Tahoe area and actually her first sport was ski alpine ski the brothers were the Utah skiing team That's right. so it kind of rhymes in the family but, you know, she's a double black diamond kind of a skier who is fearless. <laughs> she is fearless. She'll go down any hill, and she'll attack any block from the back, in the front. I'm more of a bunny slope kind of guy. What about I, you? I am, too. I am, too. <laughs> Here's, you'll see, a seven serving seven. Let me tickle the tape. The Voracek block didn't form for Hawaii. And you better have that thing locked in place when Maya Dvorak Come swinging in your area. A little surprised that Igedi got stuck and uh, was late getting out there. She's got quick feet, good laterally. Uh, normally she does get out to the outside, and that ball is uh, set from the Cal Poly side. It's a pretty good chance that Dvorak is going to get the set. Igedi, meanwhile, roofed in the middle. And that was Madeline Mercer getting the gist of that one. She's second on the team in blocks. Had an 11 block match last season against the University of Hawaii. That is two off of the single match mark in Cal Poly history. And Sickle tried to touch it deep. Good save there by Dixon. Tight to the net. The one hand set to Mercer. And right now it's Cal Poly finding ways, whether ad libbing, improvising, finding ways to score. And they've opened up a three point advantage. Look a little hungry at this set. Serve goes long though, and that helps the Rainbow Wahine certainly. Fourth service error for Cal Poly. That matches Hawaii's output in that category. No service aces to report just yet as Brooke Van Sickle repositions herself behind the service line. Mika Dixon had a nice run there. She usually scores point when it's her rotation to serve. She's got 23 aces on the year. Number three on the team. Here's the Voracek right through that block, and they are moving right now. Maya Dvorak 
It's batting practice right now in that opposite pin. Well, what a set from Janekashe. Going one way, comes back the other. Against the grain, beautiful set. Oh, the serve goes long. As Maya Dvorak, as mentioned, one of the tops in the country. In fact, fifth nationally in aces coming into this week. 49 on the year. You got to get him in. Earlier in the season, Caroline Walters saying, hey, look, our approach was just rip it and rip it. She says that as some of the errors started to mount, she started to get a little too precise with it, or at least tried to get too precise with it, and that would cause more errors as Ross commits the hitting error, giving Cal Poly the point. And so they've had to sort of adjust a little bit the Maya Dvorak approach at the service line. Let's see if the pancake is good. Oh, no, that pancake was not good. I guarantee you the challenge card would have come out had Cal Poly lost that rally. As it stands, Cal Poly up three. Van Sickle puts the pass on the money. Here's Helvig. Two hands saved there by Jackson. And a free ball coming for Hawaii. Can they cash in here? You'll see it. Goes back to Helvig. Cross court and wide. And that's a point for the Mustangs. And they're now up four, and you start to hear some moans and gasps from this Stan Sheriff Center crowd. The question is, will Robin Amo wait till the 15-point automatic timeout, or will she use one of her two timeouts? You see her outside. Here's Ross. Ross has been taking some very confident swings here in recent weeks. I like the high swing she took here. She knows she's got a big block she's going up against. She knows she's going to swing high, go for the high hands, or go inside the block and deep. Well, what you hit 414 in set one. Right now in set two, they're at 056. Gonna have to lift that up a little bit. Here's McCroskey from off the net, tools the block. And Hawaii's block not nearly as effective as it was in the first frame. In the first frame, I, mean, I think a lot of it has to do with Cal Poly adjusting their shots. They're hitting off the edges of blocks rather than hitting into the block. I think they're just taking smarter shots. Serve goes long by Madeline Mercer. Can Hawaii close this gap of about three, about where it's been here over the last few sequences. It is Riley Wagner in and back to serve, the freshman from Dublin, Ohio. Good pass there. Middle set, that is Phillips off the block and out. And so Cal Poly first to 15, trying to flip the script here in set number two. Welcome back. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Heineken. 25, we mentioned the career high in digs for Rika Okino on Friday versus UCSB. And that was otherworldly. Her previous high was 13, also against the Gauchos back in 2018. But yeah, that was a bit of an out-of-body experience for Rika. She was just on fire. It's not often you can see somebody break their career record by double. <laughs> That's right. Hawaii trailing by four here in set two after an incredibly impressive and efficient performance in set number one. Rick Van Sickle trying to get them back on track here with the put down. That is her seventh kill. The big difference, I think, in this set is Cal Poly hitting 304, a much better percentage than their negative numbers for the first set. And Hawaii dropping to 056. Here is Okino with the serve. Dixon in the first touch. They go middle set, it's Phillips, and she crushes it. Meredith Phillips averaging 1.78 kills per set, hitting 299 on the year. What a gorgeous set from Avalon to Nekashe. Right on the money. These two, a seamless connection right there. Phillips just bearing it. She was a Big West All-Frosh team a year ago. Yeah, she was on the All-Frosh team. Nekashe was Fresh, a co-freshman of the year in the conference. And so right now, those super softs are uh, putting their fingerprints figuratively and literally all over this second set as Phillips gives Cal Poly its largest lead of set two. Choi high balls it to Van Sickle. 
And that is kill number eight for Brooke Cimac. She's just having an amazing match so far. Eight kills, 14 tries, no errors, even 571. Those are kind of only eight fucking numbers. <laughs> also has six digs. And here is Noreen Yosia. I see if she can put together one of those runs at the service line. Great serve, but a good first touch there by Jackson. The dink by Dvorak finds the floor. So she has just been raring back and blasting the ball throughout the entire match. Right there, she pulls the string and places it perfectly. Nine kills for her. She's having a great match as well. Hit 304. Time out, Hawaii. Welcome back. Let's check out the first Hawaiian Bank top three. Big West Service Aces. And yes, the top three, all part of this match. Maya Dvorak, 49 aces. Noreen Yosia with 34. And Avalon Danekoshe has 27 for Cal Poly. And ironically, no aces yet in this match. This is their number three acer right here. Yosia goes to Van Sickle in the middle, and that was a little wrinkle there out of the timeout for the Bows. Little crossing play. Saw one of those audibleized on Friday by Bailey Choi. You'll see teams start to do that more and more as the season gets longer because there's so much videotape and all the other sets. Danekoshe, it was only Ross there on that outside position to try to block her, and that's it's not, not a fair fight. Not that a fair is fight. tough. That is a tall assignment, literally. Ten kills now for Dvorak. Dvorak, she's the real deal. Yeah. And Ross handles that hot serve, though. She gets the set on the outside. Was a little low. She got blocked back. Hawaii now going the other way to Helvig. Her dink shot finds the floor. There's just a little bit of sharpness that was there in set one for Hawaii that isn't quite materializing here in set number two. A lot of that has to do with how sharp Cal Poly has been able to prove to be here in this second set. Exactly, no question. Much better offensively. Outside, that's set a little off the mark, and so Jackson sends it into the net. And just as we're talking about the crispness, that time it wasn't on point. So Hawaii within three, Kyra Hanawahine getting ready to serve. Let's see if Hannah Helbig moves over to block Dvorak here. And she stays. How about that? The first ace of the match, and that thing fell off of a table. Hawaii within two. Cal Poly signals for a timeout. Five foot two inch Kyra Hanawahine with her 12th ace of the season. Lilith Wahine with the biggest and first ace of the night. You're right, Kanar. The bottom just dropped out. Good luck. That. A gravity ball there yeah. by Hanawahine. One of the triumvirate of Oregon transfers along with Van Sickle and Jolie Rasmussen, who remains out after injuring her ankle in the seventh match of the season. And so the questions continue to mount on when her return may be. Hey, let's check in with Ryan. He's got some uh, VIPs in the house with him. Hey, thanks, Kanal. Well, we got some uh, very uh, important people here in the stand, driving all the way from Sweden. Of course, we're talking to the Helvigs. We're going to start off with you, Dad Anders. What has it been like for you to uh, see your daughter play here and be in this environment at the Sanctuary Center? I, I think uh, we've been watching every game on TV, uh, but coming here is something special. The atmosphere of the arena, the crowd going crazy, it's uh, something different. It's really, really cool. I want to talk to Mom Charlotte now. What has the, uh, you know, we know Angelica Lundqvist is on the coaching staff. How great has it been to have someone from back home uh, to be kind of a mentor for Hannah? Yeah, it's really nice to have her here. It's, it's been very, I'm calm to have her here. And and I know that she will take care about Anna so much, so I'm happy. Yeah. And do you want to play here one day? Could you see yourself playing here as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, if the team is as good as it is now, I would absolutely like to come here someday. Well, we hope to see a lot more of you guys in the next four years. We'll send back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. I'm not sure if there was a recruiting violation in that interview somewhere, but um, Ryan putting in work. <laughs> Here's the middle set to Madeline Mercer. 
Out of the timeout, Cal Poly gets the side out. They have been side outing at a very high clip. The last time out, they were siding out at 92 percent. Normally, you know, if you, if you do 70 percent, you're doing well. That's what Hawaii's siding out at right now. But 92 is crazy. Cal Poly turning their offense around. Ross has to chase down the second touch. Free ball coming the way of the Mustangs. The Nekashe sends it outside to McCroskey. And dug up by Van Sickle. Bump set to Helvig off the fingertips of the block. And the dink shot by Dvorak. Diving save over the net by Okino. Middle set goes to Mercer. And she delivers another point for the Mustangs. So Hawaii got within two. Started sensing that the crowd was once again getting involved. And Cal Poly calls for a timeout. Scores two quick ones out of that break. And Hawaii once again reeling a little bit here in the late stage of set two. Robin and Mo talking to uh, Sky Williams there about jumping out on her block instead of shuffling over and then pressing over the net and being squared up on her attacker. She's sort of leaning and jumping sideways. Uh, we'll see if she's going to correct that. But I'll tell you, uh, Denekashe has done an amazing job of moving the ball around, not just relying entirely on Maya Dvorak, but really feeding the middles very well right now. Good look at Robin Amo. Getting her 57th win of her tenure the other night against UCSB. She has her team ranked 21st in the latest ABCA poll. Most importantly, 17th in the latest ratings percentage index. Now, Cal Poly is playing for a lot here. Obviously, they want to maintain their position atop the standings. They're in the hunt for a third straight Big West Conference title. They were defeated by UC Santa Barbara, and they have a biggie coming up next week against Santa Barbara. Uh, and they're going to basically be playing that one, depending on how this match turns out. Uh, they're thinking that one could be for the Big West Conference title. Here's a look at the standings. Hawaii, though, has swept UCSB in the season series. And so a win over Cal Poly, if you go to the tiebreaker formula, uh, would basically mean that Hawaii would own the top spot in the conference. They would just have to win out, and they would, despite being tied potentially with Cal Poly and UCSB in the standings, wins and loss columns, uh, they would have uh, the tiebreaker by virtue of the season sweep over UCSB. Out of the timeout, Nikki Jackson sends it into the twine. Now on the other side, Cal Poly, their RPI is in the 40s. And so again, they're motivated to win the conference. They're also motivated to try to get, if not a conference championship, an at-large into the NCAA tournament. And so these next two matches for Caroline Walters' team, they're huge. Yeah, they're, they're really big. I'm sure she's told her team. Her team knows it. Uh, the last thing that Caroline Walters said to us, or no, actually their SID told us was, you know, it'd be great if this is a three-bid conference this year. As the chance, as you'll see his touch shot, slowly matriculates down to the Terraflex. Yeah, I mean, that would be pretty spectacular in what has long been observed as a one-team conference for there to even be the discussion of possibly getting two, maybe three teams into the NCAA tournament. It tells you just how far the Big West Conference has come. Dvorak, that one didn't get over the tape. And that's a point for Hawaii. And they are within one. How about the swings in this game? Just when you thought Cal Poly had a stranglehold, Hawaii surges back to within a digit. And a timeout signaled by the Mustangs. This is a game of momentum. Nobody ever denied that it wasn't, but clearly momentum has swung back to the side of the Rainbow Wahine. There you see Caroline Walters, a great player in her own right at, at Santa Clara. She, uh, number two all-time WCC digger. Number one all-time Santa Clara digger. So she knows how to play that back row. 
That's right, and enjoying the transition in her first season as a head coach. Let's check in with Ryan. Well, one of the things that Cal Poly is shocking on their sideline is saying they have to continue to pass the ball on the net. They would like their setter to be much more aggressive offensively, allowing her to dump balls. So look for them to maybe do a job of passing that ball tighter in the net and getting her more involved actively on the second touch for Hawaii. Uh, Robin Amo taking a lot of time talking to her wing blockers, specifically Ross and Van Sickle, about their hand positioning, saying, hey, delay on the right side block because of the fact that you guys are undersized. You can't jump at the same time that the hitters are jumping. Delay a little and try to get a touch. They're trying to slow down the blocking on that right side. Back over to you guys. Thoughts on some of that info, c -Mac? Yeah, I, I agree. I think that uh, the Cal Poly pass the ball closer to the net when Deneke in the front row. It'll allow her to attack the ball more often. And you know, remember, she's a 6-2 uh, setter who can hold her own, more than hold her own up front. She's hitting 267 on the year, which is a good number. So I think it's a good idea. And right now, Deneke is in the front row. We'll see if they pass it up close for her. This set, too, very much up for grabs suddenly. With Bailey Choi. Getting ready to serve. Largest lead in set two was five for Cal Poly. Good pass there. And they go slide to Mercer. That's dug up by Okino. Ross cross court and wide. No touch at the net. And so a hitting error gives Cal Poly a two point advantage. Ross is just doing too much avoidance of that big block. I think a high hand shot might have been a smarter play or a deep roll shot down the line. Substitution here on the serve as reserve setter Jordan Amoy, a freshman from Temecula, California. A one-time top 100 recruit by PrepVolleyball.com sends it across. So what he needs it, Yosia is dug up by Dvorak. Jump set in the middle, of an awkward set there by Denekoshe. No call, nothing awkward about that as Sky Williams pulverizes that middle set. Oh, and nobody celebrates better than Sky. That smile that lights up a room. Sky Williams, second kill for her in her fourth attempt. See what she did the other night against UCSB. Wise back row wing bigger. See how close they're playing up that three meter line. They're aware that Denekashe might dump the ball over the net at any time. Outside the seconds to McCroskey. She's blocked back. The forward check will get a swing out of it, and she hammers it off the Hawaii block and out. What a dangerous weapon she is with this Mustang squad. She's like Cal Poly's version of Rado Parapuna. <laughs> that is a pretty darn accurate comparison, I'd say. It doesn't matter where she is on the floor, seemingly. Yeah. Here's Yosia, blocked and roofed. Cal Poly's Phillips and McCroskey joining forces to send that one back, and they are looking to tie this match up at one set apiece. Aloha ball for set two. The serve by Denekoshe. Two-hand pass, Van Sickle. Right side, here's Yosia, cross court, and in. So it's not Powell yet. Rika Okino getting ready to serve. And you'll see it just as uncanny about the way she sees the block. She saw the middle blocker was late getting out there, so she chooses the cross court shot right in the seam. Here's Okino. Got to get it in. She does. Good pass there by Dixon. The Voracek is dug up by Choi. High ball bump set. Van Sickle blocked and roofed. How about Meredith Phillips? Three kills in the match. That is her third block, and they have come at timely moments as Cal Poly draws even with Hawaii in the match. One set apiece. Get comfy, folks. It's going to be a competitive one. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the McDonald's match statistics. Well, we're even in sets apiece. What do you think about the overall statistical comparison? Well, it's really um, deceiving because Hawaii hit for such a big percentage, over 400 in the first set, and Cal Poly hit negative in the first set. So it looks like Hawaii is winning the kill percentage battle, but they really only won it for one set. The next set, Cal Poly came out and played much better offensively. Blocks about even. Digs, Hawaii is getting a lot of digs, uh, especially off touches off the block. And then you see the aces there, about even. I'm surprised Cal Poly does not have any aces at all. Such a good serving team. I expect that they may sneak some in here in the next couple of sets. We'll see. 
but we're in for a, a great battle. Um, I'm telling you, Dvorak, she is the real deal. Their version of Brado Parapuna. Big left-handed swing. She goes cross court. She goes line. She hits from the back row. She hits from the front row. And so far, she's got 11 kills, hitting 286. And Meredith Phillips, well, how about her in the block? They've got four blocks so far. She's been in on three of them. She's got one block solo as well. She is really good. Well, back inside the SSC Kanoa Leahy next to Chris McLaughlin. So, CMAC, how does Hawaii get back on track here in set three? I think you just got to pass the ball better. I think you got to get it to the middles more. Middles only hitting 15% of the set so far. Normally hit a. Well, that's a good start as Amber Igidi strikes first in set three. And it's the first time tonight that Hawaii has scored the opening point of a set. And Amber Igidi was hitting negative up until that point. She has one kill, two errors. Now she's. Flatlining it. And here is Noreen. You'll see it a serve. It's a good one, but a strong pass there by Dixon. Dvorak through the block and down. Well, that right now is the puzzle that Hawaii is trying to solve. Maya Dvorak, 12 kills now, hitting upwards of 300. And she has just had her way really since the start of set two. Yeah, she's, she is uh, she's just so powerful. Has so many angles, such a good player. Here's a little crossing play by Hawaii. Played up by Dvorak off the ricochet. Jackson is dug up. Here's Helvey. Block got a good piece of that one. So Mustang bringing it back. Dvorak down the line. And that time went across her body a little too far. Missed it wide, and Hawaii gets the point. She didn't miss by much, I'll tell you. Fourth hitting error for Maya Dvorak. Here's Brooke Van Sickle with the serve. They go middle, and that's Mercer dug up by Van Sickle. High ball outside Ross, the dink! Finds the floor, and a little insult to injury as Denekashe went diving for the save, and then Nikki Jackson inadvertently kicked the ball into her grill. <laughs> Checking to make sure that yeah, the is fine. Setter is okay. She's a tough athlete. Here's the kick right there. Boom. Ooh. So Hawaii up three run. Outside it goes to Jackson, blocked back by Ross. They go the other side. Dvorak. Yes. It's like clockwork right now. It's a Dvorak puzzle that Hawaii has not quite figured out. She's like the most difficult Sudoku you can find. <laughs> She's New York Times level crossword puzzle. Yeah, oh, absolutely, sure. absolutely. On a Friday or Saturday. Monday and Tuesday, not too bad. Maybe you have a shot. Well, one of the saving graces for Hawaii has been that to this point, Dvorak hasn't quite been calibrated from the service line. But that can change in an instant. How about that serve by Hanawahine? Back row said Dvorak off the block and out. They're waiting for her. It seems as though the blockers, for the most part, are timing her okay. She's just hitting through or around the block. I like the way Denekashe called a different place for, for, uh, for Dvorak to hit the ball, hitting out of back middle as opposed to back right, just to throw a different wrinkle into their offense. Good pass there by Brooke. Oh, they twist to Helvig in the middle, and she gets the point for the Rainbow Wahine. They're up 5-3. See, Helvig coming out of the game right now. There's a reason why she's playing where she is. She's playing in one of the center spots, so she's playing right side. So she comes out when one of the centers comes in, Bailey Choi comes in for her. What you're, what you're missing, what, what you're giving up, though, is Helvig hitting out of the back row, where she's normally very effective. They go step out, and that is Mercer plugging it through that Hawaii block. Well, they wanted to work the middles. That was certainly part of the game plan. And to this point, Mercer and Phillips, when they have had the opportunity, they have been effective. Mercer now with five kills, Phillips with three. And they've also been felt in the blocking game. 
Here's Yosia on the outside, tools the block. She has an uncanny ability to do that. Yeah, she has such great peripheral vision. She's creative. She knows to work the edges. And she's uncanny, as you say, in getting side outs for the Rainbow Heat as a hitter. See, three kills, already double figures in assists, close to double figures in digs. Great serve there by Ross. Outside, the set goes to McCroskey. Rolling save there by Choi. Got there in just the nick of time. Big swing by Phillips, but a bigger roof by Sky Williams. Oh, it was a great set from Danekeshe. Phillips took a mighty swing. That was as good a swing as I've seen her take all year, all, all night. Danny Choi was the one who kept the rally alive, obviously, but great swing by Phillips, only to be denied by Sky Williams. Sky Williams second on the team in blocks and blocks per set, over one block per set as that one goes long. And another rare hitting error for Maya Dvorak. And she tells Danekeshe, keep feeding me. I like that spot. It was a good set. It was my fault for hitting it too far. I don't think Danekeshe was thinking otherwise. <laughs> I know. She's, it behooves her to keep feeding Dvorak as Phillips on the slide got under that one. Sends it long, and Hawaii has opened up a five-point advantage thanks to a 4-0 run. And that cues a timeout by the Mustangs. Welcome back. Get in the game with on-demand highlights of University of Hawaii sporting events. Spectrum subscribers have exclusive access to Spectrum Sports Enhanced, channels 13 and 1013. We've already seen some Spectrum Enhanced worthy highlights in this one. And right now, Hawaii leading by a handful out of the timeout in set number three. Match tied, one set apiece. They go to Dvorak from the back row, dug up by Ross. Back set goes to Yosia. Good two-hand save there. Taylor Rose in the back row. Good. Off the ricochet pass there by Van Sickle, and you'll see it is dug up. Outside, the touch by McCroskey. Diving save, Choi. Second touch, you'll see it, and a free chance coming here for the Mustangs. Where do they go? They go middle to Phillips. Pancake save by Okino, and we play on. Outside, McCroskey misses it long. And it is a point for Hawaii. Looks of shock coming from the Mustangs coaching staff. And I'm not sure if the complaint is about the in-out call or if they thought there was something else at the net. I think they thought the pancake dig might not have been good. Or it could have been a mishandled ball on the set. In either case, it wasn't worth using up one of the challenge cards. And so Hawaii up a half dozen. Can they keep the momentum going? Ten serving four. Pass by McCroskey. They go middle to Phillips. Mistimed in the middle. So chance for Hawaii. Here's Van Sickle. Lines up, uncoils off the fingertips. It's saved by Dvorak. Phillips again in the middle. This time is able to overpower the block of Williams. So here is the sequence two points ago. Is that in or out? The call was out, and by virtue of that replay, it most certainly looked in. No challenge coming from Cal Pauly, and a service error will give the side and the point right back to the Bows. Caroline Walter said that the serve and pass game is where it's at right now. Cal Pauly, a lot of serving errors so far. Nekashe goes middle to Phillips, blocked back by Igidi. Mustangs once again go to Mc... Oh. Now they go to Dvorak. She's blocked and roofed, but a net violation called against Brooke Van Sickle. And it is a point for the Mustangs. Van Sickle telling Robin Amo she didn't touch it. Remember, Amo's already used two of her three challenges. I think at 11-6 in the third is not the best time to use up her third challenge. I think she's going to save that for a, a crucial time, either at the end of this set or sometime in the fourth. Here's Van Sickle. Got blocked back. Saved off the ricochet by Ross. Igidi is blocked. Layout save and returned by Okino. Devorachek into the net. 
And as hot as Dvorak was in set two, she has yet to really find any semblance of that same rhythm here in the third. It's like the sets are a little bit low and fast for her right now. The longer the match goes, remember, she's going to start experiencing some fatigue because of all how many sets she's getting. So right now, so far, she's got 28 sets here in just a little over two and a half sets. Pass there by Unger. Dvorak blocked out a piece. The save popped up by Ross. Here's Helvig. Tough angle. And easy pickings on the save for Dixon. Dvorak straight down to the floor. And she played behind Tori Van Winden, who was the Big West Conference Player of the Year last year. Has not played this season after suffering a concussion at the end of last year. And so I think a lot of people thought, hey, look, if Van Winden can't go, that's all she wrote for Cal Pauly. But Dvorak has taken over that position, and she has thrived. And right on cue, proving to continue to do so here in the third set. Yeah, Tori actually came out and said that Dvorak was one of the reasons why she made All-League, All-American, all those other awards she got. Dvorak was pushing her in the gym every single day. Oh, tough get there, and that's an ace. The first service ace of the match for Cal Pauly belongs to Mika Dixon. That's her 24th service ace on the year. She's the number three acer for this very good serving Cal Poly team. 3-0 run. Another ace. They go back to back. And here come the Mustangs. Rumbling back into the scene here in the third set. Trailing by just two and forcing a Hawaii timeout. Welcome back Saturday. Tune into Spectrum OC16 at noon for the HHSAA Cheerleading Championships, followed by the Minilani Marching Band Fest at 5 p.m. C-Mac, during that last time out, we saw the injured Jolie Rasmussen in the middle of the Hawaii huddle trying to rev up her teammates here as they have seen a six-point lead dissipate in the last few moments. Backside set goes to Van Sickle, and she goes right through that Mustang block to get the much-needed point to end the run. I think Jolie has been struggling with uh, her therapy and coming back not going as fast. So she's trying to re-engage, reconnect with her teammates so that when she does come back, it'll be seamless. Now the question now is when and if Jolie Rasmussen will come back. Oh, busting out the spatula was Okino. Helbig busts out the hammer. What a play by Okino to keep that rally alive. Big smile from the Kalani grad. And she keeps that play going, and then Helby, as only Helby can do, just rips away. 14 serving 10 here in set three. And that one didn't touch the floor. They yelled roof in the arena. It plays on. Helby is dug up to the net. IGD is blocked. IGD kept it alive herself. Van Sickle has to two hand it over. How's Cal Pauly staying very much in this sequence? The diving save by Van Sickle on the second touch, and it'll be returned. Here's the Dvorak, dug up by Osea. And a net violation called against Hawaii will give the point to Cal Pauly after what was one of the most exciting and enthralling rallies of this match. I really thought that ball was down on the roof. But it went off, I think, an arm, and then a knee, and then another hand. There was no whistle. Credit, credit Cal Poly for hanging in there. You'll see it has to chase down the second touch. Ross will get a swing. She's blocked. Good cover there by Okino. Bump set, back row, Van Sickle. Right there is Unger. Middle set. How about that position by Denekashe to get it to Mercer? Hawaii now with it the other way. Helvig is dug up. Here is the Voracek, cross court and wide. No touch, point Hawaii, their first to 15 in set three. Did you see where Denekashe was when she set the middle to Mercer? She was in the middle of that back row. I know, she is unafraid to go to either middle. Mercer again. Sky Williams got a good piece of that one. Here's Ross from the three-meter line. The touch shot sniffed out there by Dvorak. 
outside. That is Jackson. Easy pickings there for Yosia. Healthy gets a swing out of it. And a net violation called against Cal Poly. Hawaii back up a handful. Hawaii getting lucky there. Not playing well in broken play situations, except for Helbig swinging hard on plays like that. Oh, that one just crawls over the net. Dvorak from the back row, and she finds that end line. Won't keep her quiet for long. You know what I'm amazed at? They didn't, they, Cal Poly didn't find another place for her to play other than behind Tori Van Winden. Find a place for her somewhere? Yeah, no kidding. Or put Van Winden on the left, Ima maybe? Imagine both of those players on the floor this oh year for Cal Poly. Oh, yeah. You'll see her. Outside the Ross. Off the block and out. What do you think about the pep in Hawaii's step here in the third set. It looks better, for sure. Clearly, Cal Poly was playing so well in that second set. The Mustangs were on fire offensively. Hawaii just could not match them. Here in the third, a little more even offensively, although our stats have gone down, so we can't give you numbers <laughs> That's there. That's right. It's all going to be estimation from here on out, folks, at least for the time being. Back row, it's Van Sickle, solo stuff, Madeline Mercer rising high. All Big West Conference first teamer last year led the Big West in blocks. Mercer at 6-4, doesn't have to go up too high to stuff that one straight down. She read that play really well. And now it's Emma Reynolds out of Bakersfield, California. Back to serve, A short serve. Williams blocked by Mercer. And Choi will bump it across. So the advantage to Cal Poly. The middle set missed time. Now Hawaii with the advantage. Williams in the middle. And Choi once again looks to the sky and she delivers. I like the way that Choi repeated to Williams again, hoping to catch Cal Poly's middles off guard, but Mercer was right there ready to go. Good matchup between Williams and Mercer. Yeah, Mercer. they've been going blow for blow there. In that middle of that net. And they're off the net pass. So the swing by McCroskey. Good dig there by Ross. And Sickle will slap it over. Causes a little trouble for Rose. And that forces a free ball chance here for Hawaii. Williams blocked back. Keeps it alive, though. Yosia from off the net. Blocked back. Williams the first touch. Bump set goes to Yosia. Down the line and wide. And that block up front for Cal Poly. Keeping them in these sequences. That time it was Meredith Phillips. Hawaii had their chances there. Robin Amo very frustrated that Sky Williams is taking so many of those first contacts. She wants uh, Okino to step in and take those, I think. Van Sickle had a big run up there. She's blocked, though. She'll get a second crack at it. Took a little something off. Diving layout save in the back row by Rose. Dvorak through the block off of Yosia and into the seats. And here comes Cal Pauly again. Just when you thought Hawaii had a little bit of breathing room, starting to get tight in the room once again. I guess who's bringing them back? Dvorak, the Alpine skier from Tahoe. And Sickle, again, that delayed middle set. It has worked whenever Hawaii has gone to it. Obviously trying to ration it out with Van Sickle with the flush swing that time. Yeah, that was a cute little play. A quick one and then a lob three to uh, Van Sickle. Robin Amo, I think, is a green that uh, Choi and Choi and you'll see it call a few more plays now. Rico Okino deals an ace out of the deck. So we have the top two ace servers in the conference in this match. Neither of them with an ace. It's been some of the supporting cast, quote unquote, members of the rosters that have been providing that step. Dixon for Cal Poly. Okino. Dvorak. And a net violation called against Hawaii. That was a blasty blast anyway. So either way, you slice it, point for the Mustangs. 
You know, you gotta, you gotta look at a person like Dvorak and wonder what she was doing those other two years. Well, she was working hard, and when Ben Winden went out this year, she upped her work ethic even more. Choi goes high and away to Van Sickle. Good save by, you'll see off the block, sent over by Igidi, and you'll see a fields it. Van Sickle misses wide. Oh, Hawaii had worked the advantage. Well, they couldn't cash in, and it is once again a three-point differential on the scoreboard. Largest lead for Hawaii in this third set was six. Choi goes backside to Yosia. The dink. How about Dvorak laying out to keep it alive? Free chance for the Bows. Choi, middle, IGD touches it down. All right, really needed to get back to their middles. That's where their high percentage attack is. And that's going to force Cal Poly to take a timeout. Maya putting the D in Dvorak right there, but it's Amber IGD getting the point. Entering the match, second in the Big West Conference in kill percentage. Amber Igidi, who has lifted her game here at this stage of her freshman year. You don't often see that from freshmen. In fact, you probably more frequently see freshmen hit a certain wall in their first season of college volleyball. Amber Igidi has almost flipped that a little bit. Yeah, she just keeps getting better and better and better. Now, she flatlined it early in this match, but she's coming on stronger now, and she's getting better sets. But remember, she's going up against a 6-4 and a 6-3 blocker in Cal Poly, uh, Mercer and Phillips, who are two very good middle blockers, probably the best that IGD has faced all year. It's a real challenge. What has Hawaii done better, you think, in this third set as compared to set two, the one they lost 25-22? Well, they're, they're playing better defense. They're, they're passing better, with the exception of a, you know, the one uh, service ace, but they've been passing much, much better. And for the most part, the hitters are keeping the ball in play and forcing Cal Poly to play some defense. Right now, Hawaii out digging Cal Poly 47-32. That's not a number that I think Caroline Walters would be proud of. She prides herself in being a great digging coach since she herself was such a great digger. But right now, Cal Poly only with uh, 32 digs so far. Mika Dixon leading the way with nine digs. And Dvorak with nine digs. We got the stats back up, C-Max, so we can start giving you a little bit more accurate depiction of some of these totals. Dvorak with 21 kills, hitting 311. She leads everybody. Brooke Van Sickle leading Hawaii offensively with 11 kills. Her hitting percentage has dropped slightly down to 276, but she's also got nine digs in her stat line. Another double-double performance already for Noreen Yosia, 17 assists, 10 digs. Yeah. Whole hum, another whole hum night That's for right. her. That's groundhog day for her. Backside, Dvorak to set a little low, so she dinks it, pinballed around on the Hawaii side. And it finally falls to the floor. And Dvorak's uncanny. She really seems to know just when Hawaii's playing their wide perimeter defense. And when they are, she'll tip it to force those back row diggers to come all the way up and stumble getting there. Crowd trying to turn up the volume knob. They go Van Sickle on the twist. That one wasn't executed as well as what we've seen earlier. Dvorak, meanwhile, blocked and roofed. Helvey got the gist of that one right next to IGD. And I tell you what, nobody celebrates a roof more emphatically than Amber IGD. <laughs> she knows how to do it. She, and she yeah. said earlier in the pregame show, I believe, that she, she said, I just love to celebrate. I love to bring <laughs> energy to the team. Well, she most certainly does that. She leads this team, perhaps, in energy. Scramble play here for Cal Poly. Free chance for Hawaii. You'll see it. Sets up Helvey. Got under it. Was there a touch? No touch. And a point for Cal Poly. 19 serving 22. Hawaii trying to take a two sets to one lead in the match. This is effectively the match for the top spot in the Big West Conference. And the Rainbow Warriors, uh, Rainbow Wahine trying to give Cal Poly a little bit of their own business after getting swept at Mott Gym earlier in the year. Back row said it's Van Sickle. That one got stuck at the top of the tape. Hawaii plays it back. Igidi threw the block and down. I love how you'll see is going back to Igidi despite the fact that Amber was struggled earlier tonight. 
keep feeding her because she's bound to come back and hit for that uh, three to four hundred percentage that she's used to. Right now, IG hitting 125. Saved by Hanawahine. They go slide. That's Mercer on the touch shot. Save Van Sickle. Ross the swing through the block and down. And it is Aloha Ball in set three for the Rainbow Wahine. And Rossi challenging a big block there, 6-3 and 6-2 up there on the outside. And Rossi just going for it. Remember when Ross hit negative 214 first time around against Cal Pauly, she now has nine kills and she's hitting up near 250. Dvorak from the back row is blocked back. Save Dixon outside. The swing by Jackson finds the floor. Nice little cutback shot by Jackson. Saw the, the block move across court on her, so she cut it back down the line, and it was wide open. Jackson won three state titles at Coronado High School in Henderson, Nevada. Now back behind the line to serve. Pass by Ross. Still a little ball for Hawaii. Williams finishes the deal. And the Rainbow Wahine take a two sets to one advantage. The top spot in the league within reach. But the Rainbow Wahine have a long way to go to finish off the two time defending league champs. The Pigeon Gorilla author Lee Tonouchi shows you how to craft a story on the next Joy of Crafting. That's tonight following. This live coverage of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball, a little crafting going on in the stands. And what the Rainbow Wahine have crafted on the floor tonight, C-Mac, is a 2-1 lead here against the two-time defending Big West Conference champions. It is far from over. This is too good of a Cal Poly team to predict a set for win for Hawaii. This Cal Poly team is so, you know, they're big, 6-3 and 6-4 in the middle. They've got an opposite, you know, who's uh, got 22 kills. Maya Dvorak having a phenomenal night, 292. They're well coached. They were picked to win the league, so they've got some swag going on. They're confident. And in, uh, in Hawaii, meantime, just got to find a way to finish in four sometime, because they're always going five. <laughs> That's right, four of their last five home matches went five sets. The crowd, the players, I'm sure would love to prevent that. But again, easier said than done against this Cal Poly team. And the times have changed, right? It's no longer Hawaii is the big bad bully of the league. This is a league that has the potential, at least, to send multiple teams, maybe even three teams, to the NCAA tournament this year. Cal Poly trying to climb up the rungs of the RPI ladder, currently 41st in the latest RPI ratings. I'm trying to climb up into a position where they would have a legitimate chance at an at-large bid if they do not win the conference. How about that layout pass there by Unger, but then Dvorak hits it into the net. That is her ninth hitting error, and that was an unforced one. That might have been Noreen Yosia's best serve of the night, and Unger just popped it up on a diving save there. Topped it up good enough. Check could get a swing. Here it comes from Yosia. Unger again sticks the pass. They go to Phillips. She hits it wide. No touch up front point for Hawaii. And they come out the gate here in set number four with back to back points. One thing unusual tonight, you know, Robin Amo has had very few subs. She's been very steady with a solid lineup. See the wheels turning. We'll see a measures up the serve and forces an overpass. Then she sets up IGD in the middle. Well, Amber was overdue. I'll tell you, hit 125. That's not her number. Now she's bumping it up into the 200s. She sees that block right there, but you know, that's a big block she's facing. Six three. Look at that celebration. Do something else. Yeah, five kills for IGD. She's now at. 300 in the percentage category. Four blocks on the night as well. Overpass, Ajidi! Lays the smackdown! And look who's serving. Oh, as usual, Doreen Yosia. Ajidi says mahalo nui loa after Yosia. 
And this first person she congratulated, Marine Yosita, right. because Marine serve allowed her to get the easy smack down. And she keep the run going. It's another good serve, good pass this time, though. Here's the Voracek. Aijita got a piece. And that would be about it for Hawaii. So the service run for Yosia is Pau, and it is Mika Dixon now with Cal Pauly on the board in the fourth behind the service line. We had Hawaii scored the fifth point there. I think I would have called timeout if I was Caroline Walters. There's something to cool off Maureen Yosia. That might have been an overpass right there. Back and forth at the net. Joust at the net and played up by Cal Pauly. Dvoracek, IGD got a piece. But another kill for Maya Dvorak. That is now 24 kills in the match, and it is two serving four in the court. That one was impressive. It was a broken play. She had to step into the court toward the middle blocker in order to make that swing. And you know, she's fearless when she swings. She's, yeah. she's not basically got two shots. She's got that all-out swing, and then she's got that great little roll shot and tip shot that has been so effective tonight. The only time she's made errors, I think, has been when the set's been a little bit low for her. She does have nine errors. That's, what, that's why she's hitting 275. But her attempts for the night, two, 51 attempts. Oh, that's set too low for Igidi. And just like that, Cal Pauly has scored three straight. This is a game of swings. No pun intended. <laughs> I think that pun was fully intended. Three serving four. But what you way out of system here. Free ball coming for the Mustangs. Can they draw even in the fourth? Helvig blocks the four check and logs the roof. That was mano y mano. It was one on one at the pin, and Helvig won the battle. That's why I like when, uh, when Robin moves her out there to block the Voracek. I think it's a good move rather than leaving Rossi. Let's see if she moves her out there. Rossi right now, I think, is going to go out there. No, Helbig's going to go out on her. The Sickle forces the overpass. Igidi may have jumped a smidge early, but she was able to levitate just long enough to still put down the hammer. She was definitely on the way down. Not her best time to swing, that's for sure. The result was just fine, though, from Hawaii's vantage point. Six serving three. Good serve there by Van Sickle. Igidi thought she may have had another one. Hawaii plays it back in transition. Bumps that cross court to Ross. Tools the block, and Hawaii up 7-3. And Caroline Walters pondering a timeout here. And Rossi working the edges of that block. Smart play. When you're 5'10", you're going up against 6'4", 6'3". You better start working the edges. Walters lets it play on. Here's Dvorak into the net. And maybe some fatigue starting to kick in for Maya Dvorak. That was her 53rd attempt, and that prompts Caroline Walters to signal for a timeout. 4-0 Rainbow Run. Welcome back. There's a final Rainbow Wahine soccer team. 1-1 final in double overtime with Long Beach State. Hawaii, we learned on Friday, qualified for the first time for the Big West Conference Tournament. They are the four seed. Cal State Fullerton will host. They're the top seed. Hawaii will play the Titans in the opening round of the tournament on Thursday. As we rejoin live action out of the timeout, and it is Nikki Jackson, a much needed point for Cal Pauly. Rainbow Wahine leading two sets to one. And up a handful prior to that swing by Jackson. And here is Maya Dvorak from the service line. One of the top ace getters in the country. And she maybe didn't plan it that way that time, but she records her 50th ace of the season right there. Amazing. The coaching staff says that she has worked so hard to become really good that's, that's serving and the rest of her game as well, but maybe the hardest worker on the team. The heart and soul, they say, of this Cal Poly team. It is a bit of a feast or famine equation, though, for Dvorak from behind the line, as we saw right there. I mean, that was a perfect microcosm. Ace followed by the out serve. But that's the kind of give or take that you live with because when she does get hot, oh boy, she can go on a run. Jackson, the touch shot, diving save raw. Second touch, you'll see it. And it is shoveled back over by Helvey. In the middle, there's Mercer, looming large. 
and putting a hurting on it. Here's Ross keeping the ball alive, giving up her body, keeping it alive. And here's Mercer at 6'4", high school All-American. Where she played at San Juan Hills and San Juan Capistrano. Jackson the serve, pass Van Sickle. They go right side to Helvig. Right down the seam. Hawaii hitting over 600 in this fourth set so far. Cal Poly hitting negative 091. This is like a rerun of the, of the first set. And Hawaii got off to a hot start, hitting really playing well offensively. Cal Poly just struggling, having more hitting errors than kills. Bailey Choi with the serve, 10 serving six. They go middle, that's Mercer, the touch shot. Yosia and Ross almost collide there, saving it. Van Sickle from the back row. Off Mercer and down. Now those are the kind of scramble plays that separate the good teams from the great teams. The great teams will scramble like that, and an alert player in the back row will go up and take a rip at it. A lot of teams will bump that ball over because it's kind of awkward, but not Brooke Van Sickle. She's a volleyball player. Yeah, when she's locked in, she just brings so much to the table in every facet of the game. The quintessential six rotation player. High ball bump set goes to McCroskey. The save down the line by Choi. Back bump set Ross from off the net. Had a tough angle at it. There wasn't much she could do there. Rico Okino quickly goes over to tell her teammate, my bad. Yeah, that was a tough. It was a tough back bump set because the ball was spinning a lot and Rico was trying to take that spin off it and just tried a little bit too hard. So here's the serve by Mercer. Choi high balls it outside to Yosia. Easy pickings on the dink there by Dvorak. Phillips in the middle. Too hot to handle for even Okino. And Cal Pauly back within three. Nice little wrist away shot there. Even the 25 dig Rico Kino couldn't get that one. Handful of kills for Phillips. Choi high balls it outside. You'll see ya. Unloads. And Dvorak is the victim of it. Boy, Dvorak took a shot. Is this in the grill? No, she, oh, she she protected herself with her hands, but we could hear it over here. It was a, it was a big swing. Tough kill. Dvorak bounces up, ready to go. See the four kills for Yosia. 22 assists, 11 digs, another double-double performance. As the serve by Roscoe's one. Yosia now with 59 career double-doubles. That's her 15th double-double performance this season. Continues to climb the charts in a number of different categories in the UH record books. Williams in the middle, caught it fat, no touch up front. And right there is Cal Poly, back within two, C-Mac. I like, I like the set, I like the choice to go to the middle there. Looks like Robin Amo is gonna call a timeout. Or maybe look for a challenge? Yeah, she's challenging this. This is her third and final challenge, unless this match goes to a fifth set, in which case she would get an additional challenge. But what do you think about the timing of the challenge? And we're not yet privy as to exactly what she is challenging on the play. She is going to challenge what we are told a touch at the end of that play. So not a touch in the block, a touch in the back row. Is that what she's saying? Not a touch there. But maybe they're looking at a touch there hmm. on Dixon. I believe we would have seen that. It would have been easier to see. Dixon tries to make a touch out of it. Yeah, she reaches, but I don't, I don't think she comes near it. Yeah, and didn't look like from the previous angle there was a touch on the block. And I can't see really anything there. And she watched Dixon reach for it, but no, oh, not even close. Easy call. And yes, the call will stand. And so no more challenges available for Robin Amo the rest of the way here in set four. Two point differential. Right, he's got two timeouts left. Cal Poly's got 
one. A 4-1 Mustang run. And that was a near ace by Denekoshe, ruled out by the line judge. And we are going to get a challenge from Caroline Walters. I think it's a good challenge. Yeah. I thought the ball was in, didn't you? From this angle, it looked in. So we'll see. It was right in front of the line judge there, but see if this angle tells the story. Ooh. That looks like it's on the line, in my humble opinion. Yeah, he's got a little bit, a lot of green too, though. Let's see. Maybe this is a better angle. Or not. <laughs> yeah, that, that actually, <laughs> the shadow of the ball looked to be a little bit more on the green. But uh, yeah, Dixon Chun saw what we saw from that first angle. And so a successful challenge by Caroline Walters. That's now a 3-0 Cal Poly run. And it is a one-point set here in the fourth. Hawaii led by as many as five. That advantage has evaporated. And here is Denekashe into the net. And that one will drive you kind of berserk if you're a head coach, in this case, Caroline Walters. You have the momentum. It seems like you're on the verge of turning this set around, and then the service error gives it right back to the Bows. Error number 10 on the night for the Mustangs. Okino with the serve. They let you up two. They go middle. It's Phillips. And she goes off the fingers of the block and down. But White read that play well. Had two blockers up, I think. But Phillips, 6'3", she's just big and strong. She can go high. She can go over pretty much any block. Sophomore out of Houston, Texas. was a four-year varsity starter at Memorial High School. But another service error, this time by Leah Unger. Those are just ill-timed at the moment for Cal Poly. And look who now goes behind the service line for Hawaii. Marine Yosia, who reflected for the media about what goes through her mind prior to these serves. She tries to clear all of the ambient noise. As Dvorak is roofed, return to sender, Helvig next to IGD. How about the great pass by Mika Dixon off Norino Sia's serve. It gave, it gave uh, Dvorak a chance to get a swing there. But too much Helvig at the net. 15 serving, 12. Down the line, diving pass Unger. Outside, set goes to Jackson, roll shot. Right there to dig it is Helvig. Here's Van Sickle off the block, played off the ricochet by Yosia. Back bump set. Too far off of the forearms of Rico Okino. I think he's just trying to be a little bit too precise there. Well, look at this serve receive right here. Another great move that time by Leah Unger. She really saved that play, saved that rally. You'll see a they go slide to IGD. She's blocked and roof. Jackson was ready, waiting, and able. And Hawaii's three-point lead, just like that, goes back down to one. This Mustangs team dies hard, doesn't it? They're big, they're competitive, they're athletic. They're a big-time swinger at, with uh, Dvorak. Solid middle, great center, Nekachea. 14 serving 15, diving past Okino, right side, it's Van Sickle, tried to go high hands, and it goes long, no touch, and we are even at 15 apiece in set four. And a timeout taken by Robin Amo. She'll have one remaining. We got ourselves a contest in the fourth. Welcome back, time now for the Akamai Roofing Report. Eight total team blocks for Hawaii tonight, and so you add that to the Season total, 237.5 on the year. The Rainbow Wahine team that suddenly has added the blockade 
to its arsenal. But right now, we are even Steven at 15 apiece here in the fourth. Hawaii up two sets to one. Helvig off the Cal Poly block, and they'll play it back. Middle set goes to Mercer. The dink saved and returned. They go to Mercer again off the fingertips. Good dig in the back row by Okino. Here's Helvig through the block and down. And that's kill number 11 for the freshman from Sweden. Big point out right there because Okino saves it right here to keep the rally alive. But I'll tell you, Hawaii was struggling the last few points. Neither team's offense playing very well, well right now. Cal Poly hitting 0.59, Hawaii hitting 143. Those are not monster numbers. Here's Dvorak. And the block had not formed. She just split the uprights there. And that's kill number 25 for Maya Dvorak. Oh, she is so difficult to stop. Such range. And she will serve, which can always be dangerous. How about the pass there by Okino? Helvig from the opposite position, popped up by Unger. Saved out of the seats by Jackson and returned to Hawaii's side. You'll see it. Back to Helvig, through the block and down. Oh, I like the repeat to Helvig. I like that a lot. She's hot right now. She's only playing three rotations, so why not feed her a bunch? That's right, the Hana Ho set there from Noreen Yosia. And Helvig now with 12 kills to go along with five blocks. On the hole, I get that. I just got that. Very clever, Camilla. <laughs> Mercer sends it long. Was there a touch? No touch. Point for the Rainbow Wahine. They're up a deuce. One timeout left on either side here in this fourth set. Here is Hana Wahine. Dvorak from the back row, off the block, played up by Williams. You'll see a bump sets Ross, blocked back, and then it sort of balanced on the side of Ross's head before finally falling to the Terraflex. It set a little bit inside, but you know, Ross is going up against 6'3 and 6'4. She's like 5'10. And uh, that was like being in the closet right then. It was a tough shot. Very, Good block by Cal Poly. Very even in the blocking department between both teams. Jackson with the serve. Sliding past there, Van Sickle. Cross court bump set. Here's Ross, the touch shot. Diving save, Dvorak. The dump shot attempt by Denekeshe is dug up by Yosia. Here's Helvig, dug up over the net by Dvorak. Ross thought about it. She fields it, though. Helvig again through the block. Jackson with the up. And Dvorak runs out of room, goes over our press row table here. She appears to be OK. But it's a point for the Rainbow Wahine. How about the effort there by Maya Dvorak? That was a great effort. She's, I, I, I vote for her for All-American all right now. Just based on her effort, her attitude, her physicality, what she means to this team. So 19 serving 17. They go outside. Nikroski, that one didn't get above the tape. And a point for Hawaii, they hit the final pole. 20 to 17. Caroline Walters will use her last time out here, C-Mac. Interesting. It's desperation time for Cal Poly. They trail by three. Hawaii trying to close the deal against this very tough Preseason favorite in the conference, Mustang squad. If I'm not mistaken, I think she's got two more challenges left. I think I would have used the challenge there and rather than using her last time out, but we'll see how it works out. I mean, she can still do that going forward. Correct. She can use the, the, the challenges between 20 and 25 for sure. But the thing about the challenges is you don't necessarily know how long those breaks will last. UH fans, select your exact seat locations when purchasing individual game tickets at hawaiiathletics.com. Click on the tickets button to print your tickets. Avoid the lines by going online. Again, this is a match for the top spot in the conference. Whoever wins this one would certainly be in the pole position to win a conference championship. Let's send it over to Ryan. 
Well, the Cal Poly coaching staff talking to their team about tracking Hawaii's offense, saying that Hawaii's running some different things here. A lot of part of this match, like slides that we haven't seen, really Hawaii run a whole lot of. They're running exiting plays. Bottom line, they want their blockers to just stay home on Hawaii's hitters, tracking them throughout the net. And for Hawaii, Koji Sap really trying to get this team motivated to finish it here. They do not want to go to yet another fifth set. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot. Yeah. But I know you want to go to, to a fifth set, don't you, Kano? You're like, you like those, don't you? <laughs> I mean, they're always fun to watch. <laughs> but I think uh, most of the people leaning towards the team in black tonight uh, would appreciate if they're able to wrap things up before then. But again, a much easier scenario said than done. Crowd quiet significantly as Choi goes into her serve. They go middle set, that's Mercer. The dig there by Van Sickle. Quick reset by Ross. Layout saved to Voracek. Here comes Cal Pauly. McCroskey is blocked. And Williams got handcuffed by it off the ricochet. So Cal Pauly gets the point out of that timeout. They're without a timeout remaining here in the fourth. Robin Omo is without a challenge remaining here in the fourth, but she does still have one timeout in the pocket. And Madeline Mercer will serve, sends it away out. That was a huge break for Hawaii. The 13th service error for Cal Poly here in this match. Well, you know, this is a team that takes a lot of chances. They've won a lot of their matches this year based on aggressive serving. And uh, I think that's right now, though, they're being maybe a little bit too aggressive. Cal Poly out of system. And Dvorak two hands it over. Can Hawaii take advantage here? Middle set Williams blocked over the net and roofed. That one hovered above the tape for a moment and then fell down on the Hawaii side. Give another block to Meredith Phillips. Solid block by Meredith, but you know, I think Sky would have been better off just passing the ball up rather than trying to tap it over right away. Team's dead even in blocks. Van Sickle comes flying in, layout saved to Nekoshe. Hawaii resets in transition, backside it's Yosia. Off the fingertips, good save, two-hand style by Dixon. Dvorak blocked. But it goes out of bounds. And a point for Cal Poly. And looking up at the scoreboard, right there are the Mustangs. Back within a point. I'd call timeout right now if I were Robin Almo. She heard you. She signals for a timeout. <laughs> she uses her final timeout of this fourth set. This is the kind of competition you expected to see here. Hawaii knew this was going to be a massive weekend, right? Hosting UC Santa Barbara on Friday. Coming from behind after trailing two sets to one in that one, winning 17-15 in the fifth. And then having to regroup, having the day off yesterday because of the UH football team playing. And then coming back tonight against the team that swept them just last month at Mott Gym in California. And knowing that they would have an opportunity to sit atop the standings if they get this one. You knew it would be competitive. You knew Cal Poly would make it difficult. And certainly in this fourth set, that's exactly what we've seen. Here's an interesting stat from this fourth set. Cal Poly hitting 0, 0, 0. Hawaii hitting almost 200, hitting 182. And yet the score is almost even. Go figure. Yeah, how do you account for that? It's, you know, they're, they're scoring in other ways. They're getting, getting in blocks. Uh, they're still struggling digging. Hawaii out digging them by 19. 56 to 37. Well, what you led offensively here tonight by Hana Helvig, 13 kills to go along with five blocks. You know, the first time around, Helvig held to six kills in that sweep defeat against the Mustangs October 11th. She hit 0.83. Tonight she's at 3.33. Meanwhile, Brooke Van Sickle pitching in 12 kills. McKenna Ross, double figures in kills again for the second straight match here this weekend. She had 10 put downs against UCSB on Friday. Big serve coming up here out of the timeout by Denekoshe. Fielded by Okino. Choi high and away to Van Sickle. Cross court the dig by Dixon. Backside to Voracek. With definity, we are tied at 21. Cal Poly has scored three straight, and Dvorak on her 58th swing gets kill number 27. She looked pretty fresh right there. 
she just hammered that. Hawaii goes backside to Yosia. And oh, she's the one who likes to play between 20 and 25, right? That's right. She's the clutch girl. This is when she starts to lock in right yeah. here. <laughs> Always interesting to see the setter to setter connection, Bailey Choi to Noreen Yosia. 22 serving 21. And Rika Okino behind the line. Dixon sticks the pass. Middle set, that's Phillips. Okino sticks the dig. Touch shot, Ross is blocked back. Good save there, Igedi. Here's Yosia, huge block against her. And she makes it happen. Noreen Yosia, what can you say about her? She just does everything. That one there, she, it's a little bit of a trap set. Nice dig by Okino. This rally wouldn't have been won without Okino, by the way. But Yosia just hits high and hard. Wolf form block. Some extra moments being taken as Meredith Phillips was straightening out her shoelace situation. And now we're getting ready to get back at it. Hawaii up two. Off the net pass, broken play. And here we go, free chance for Hawaii. Tough first pass though by Van Sickle. You'll see it from off the net. Saved by Dixon. Backside, the Voracek off the block of Yosia and into the pin. Big time missed opportunity for the Bulls there. Hawaii's really got to do a better job if they're going to be a really, really good team of, of passing those off-ball plays, the broken plays. They got to, say, those passes got to go up there where they can have three or four attackers. Right now, they're just one attacker. It's too easy for the other team. Choi, backside, Yosia, diving save Unger. And it is slapped across by Jackson. You'll see a second crack at it goes cross court. Right there is Denekoshe. So Dixon, bump sets, Dvorak blocked in a row. Amber Ibgidi. And Brooke Van Sickler, they got a piece of it. How about the save there by Under to keep the sequence alive? And then, yes, Ibgidi next to Van Sickle. Ibgidi falls to her wallet and celebrates a room. Aloha ball for set four and the match. And Helbig back in the front row. That's good news for Hawaii right now. And look who's behind the service line. It's also good news for Hawaii. As this crowd draped in black on a blackout night at the SSC. Claps as you'll see it brings it across. Pass by Dixon. Backside, here's Dvorak off the high hand. Saved, you'll see a chance for Hawaii here. Okino sets up. Van Sickle, she's dug up there by Unger. Dvorak again through the block and down. Net violation called against Hawaii. And it is not how yet. Let's say it. Avalon Denekeshe is uncanny with, with the way she finds her attackers, especially Dvorak. Hey, she knows where her bread is buttered. Still Aloha Ball, pass tight to the net, one hand set to IGD. Easy save here for Cal Poly, it's Jackson off the tape, saved by Yosia. Helvig from off the net against the double block, it's dug up over the net, played by Van Sickle, Hawaii with the advantage, here's Helvig! Great dig there by Dixon, the swing by Dvorak, dug to the tape, and a net violation called against Cal Poly, they'll call it interference against the Mustangs, and that gives Hawaii the victory. What a finish! And Caroline Walters and the Cal Poly coaching staff not at all pleased by that final ruling, but it does the Mustangs in, and the Rainbow Wahine Flip the script after suffering a sweet defeat in California at the hands of the two-time defending conference champs. And they take this one to claim first place in the Big West Conference standings. Now the key is they've got to run the table the rest of the way in order to really claim that title. But what a huge hurdle they jumped tonight. It is officially in Hawaii's hands. They control their own destiny as they will try to traverse the final four matches of the regular season on the road at UC Davis, at UC Riverside, 
And then back home to finish it off against CSUN in Long Beach State. Scott Robbs is with Robin Amo. Coach, first off, congratulations, and also thanks for not going five sets today. It is what it is. I don't know, they played great today. Passing was good. Um, some brain farts along the way. It's a win. How, how does it feel now? I, you're in, you're, I know you have a headache. You're in first place and you control your own destiny now. Well, I didn't know we were in first. It's all good, that's, that's sweet. It is what it is, they just gotta keep playing, you know? It's not over, season's not over, we just gotta keep playing. How much motivation was there to uh, get back at them for what happened at Cal Poly? I mean, I don't know how much motivation is for them, but I don't like losing. And we lost in three, so I told them we got in the locker room, like, I don't know about you, but I was waiting for this moment to happen. It's all good. Yeah. Go enjoy it. Oh, I will, thanks. All right, guys, back over to you. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. So it came down to this final call. They called an interference against Madeline Mercer, saying that she played the ball on Hawaii's side. You agree with it? Absolutely. That was a great call. Bill Forrester should be commended for making a very gutsy call on match point, but it was absolutely the right call. Well, the Bank of Hawaii players of the match, Maya Dvoracek, she was a monster. 29 kills. You see the hitting percentage, 13 digs, double-double performance for her. Double-double as well on the other side for Brooke Van Sickle. 12 kills, hit 216, para blocks, and 11 digs. Some other stalwart performances. Double-double again for Noreen Yosia. Hana Helvig leading the way in kills. And McKenna Ross, she goes double-double, 10 kills and 10 digs. All right, C-Mac, how big was this tonight? It was huge. It's about as big as it gets. It's one of the uh, one of the reasons why I flew in from Maitland to come back to this game. <laughs> it really is quite like the biggest game of the year. What, what, what are I doing on the mainland? So and I'm so glad I came back because this is uh, this is big for a lot of reasons. For RPI reasons, for hosting reasons, for Big West Championship reasons. I mean, you name it. Go right down the line. This checks all the boxes for being a huge match. Great win. Congratulations to uh, Robin Amo and the uh, staff for putting up a, put together a, a great game plan. Again, you have UCSB, Cal Poly, and Hawaii all with two losses, but Hawaii, by virtue of the tiebreaker formula, effectively sits in first place. And so it is their conference title to lose. Obviously, also their conference title, hopefully, to win. That's it for us. Don't forget about the Heineken post game show. They're going to break things down in the corner. But for now, for Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Until next time, everybody, aloha from the Stan Sheriff Center. Welcome back to the Heineken Post Game Show. I'm not complaining. Well, we're back here in the corner. You can see them taking up the Terraflex because you have Wahine basketball on Tuesday against San Diego State. You'll see it live right here on Spectrum Sports. But today it was Hawaii over Cal Poly. In four, one of the reasons why Hawaii came up victorious, not just today, but I think Friday as well as our guests here in the corner, Rico Aquino, the libero, 10 digs tonight, 20 receptions without an error, even Ooh. threw in a service ace. And <laughs> how did you feel about this weekend going in? You had 25 digs on, uh, on Friday. How big was this to you personally this weekend? Uh, it was a confidence boost for sure. Um, you know, we work hard in, practicing, or in practices, so it's really nice that you know, I'm able to do what I do in practice in the games. Okay, so I just want to ask, are you ever sore? I mean, you are flying yourself <laughs> everywhere on the court <laughs> with, I mean, do you take yoga? What do you do? Uh, well, yeah, in the off season, actually, I did do yoga, which is really, really fun. And so it's a good hobby. But um, I mean, there's a lot of adrenaline, so <laughs> I don't really feel it. You can like discover like a couple bruises here and there, like the next day, but it's okay. <laughs> You know, when you look at the evolution of your role and really the libero position on this team mm -hmm. this season, it, it's sort of been unique. You know, you started <laughs> off as a lineup where you maybe came in and served and maybe played a few rotations mm -hmm. because you guys were in the fourth hit or outside system. Now you're back to more traditional. You're coming in for the middles. Mm -hmm. What has that change been like for you um, to kind of go in to evolve into what your role has become now? Well, it's awesome because I feel like I can contribute more this way, um, for sure. And, you know, well, it's not really anything that I haven't done before because, I mean, growing up, it's kind of how, you know. So in the beginning of the season, it was a little different. But I didn't mind, you know, if I can contribute to the team, I was happy to do so. All right, you guys have four more matches remaining. You're in first place. You control your own destiny. Mm -hmm. You guys go back out on the road. You go against Davis, who gave you guys a hard time over here. <laughs> 
talk about preparing for this final road trip. Yeah, so we, in the locker room, we were just talking about it. You know, our season's not over yet. This is a huge weekend for mm -hmm. us. We had two, two wins, uh, which is huge. But, you know, we do need to finish this season out with four more wins. So uh, I think that, uh, we're keeping that in mind going into this week of practice and going on the road. So for you, when you look at your overall game, what do you feel you actually have to really work on to continue to con be, be better? I mean, you had a breakout weekend. You hit some high <laughs> records. You dug twice as many balls last night, and even tonight, you dug more balls tonight than you did last year. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you need to focus on? Uh, consistency, I think. You know, that's kind of the role that I play. Everybody looks to me as... Uh, I mean, I'm like constantly on the court, so I think all around there's so much room for improvement and on top of that, just being more consistent, so, uh, buckling down in the passing, so serve receive especially. Yeah. You know, Scott just said that there's four more matches here, two more matches uh, at home, mm -hmm. and, and then you guys kind of head into the postseason, <laughs> but you know, you could be looking at your last weekend, one more home stand for mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. uh, during your Rainbow Wahine career. What has this experience overall been like for you? And, and what is the mentality going in knowing that this next time you're here could be your last weekend playing at home? Well, it's been crazy, amazing, all of the above, really. Um, you know, as far as this being our last weekend, or next, whenever we come back, um, being the last time in the stand sheriff, uh, I mean, it's sad for sure, but I think if we all we leave it all out on the court, then there's nothing that we can really be too bitter about. <laughs> Rika, congratulations. Keep it up next Thank week, you. or actually, I guess technically this week, <laughs> uh, on the road. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. The pride of Kalani High School, Rika Okino, helping Hawaii to a four-set win over Cal Poly. We'll have more when we come back.